In this Dreams of Bike Guy video, we're checking out the 2022 Trek Fuel EX7. The Fuel EX7 slots in in Trek's all-mountain trail bike lineup as the best value to performance ratio in Trek's line. And we're gonna go into this 2022 model, check out some of the features and designs about it, talk about geometry, and then of course, we're gonna find out exactly what it weighs. So if this is interesting to you, I suggest you sit back and enjoy this video, as well as consider hitting subscribe if you enjoy what you see. To start off this video, we should talk a bit about the Trek Fuel EX series. So the Fuel EX series is Trek's all-mountain trail bike. And by that, this bike's gonna be set up with 140 millimeters of front suspension travel, 130 millimeters of rear suspension travel, an adjustable geometry we'll get into a little later on, and 29 inch wheels. And Trex Fuel EX series is actually one of the most popular bikes sold for full suspension trail bikes here in the United States. And something that no doubt on the trail you've seen time and time again, because this particular model has been made for several generations. The version we're checking out here is the most recent generation, which is running an aluminum frame, although this bike is also available in carbon fiber. So the numbers on the Fuel EX series indicate the part spec of the bike. So they start at seven and they go all the way up to 9.9. .9. So the Trek Fuel 5, 7, and 8 all indicate that they're aluminum and then they move into the nine point series, which indicates carbon fiber. So this bike is the mid-level of the aluminum bikes. It gives all the same performance as those carbon bikes at a little bit heavier and slightly less refined frame, but the geo and the design of the bike all stays the same. Moving into the frame of the Fuel EX7, it's using Trex Alpha Platinum Aluminum. The Platinum Aluminum is their highest grade of aluminum frame that they have, so this is shaped and manipulated tubing. It runs internal cable routing with their control freak system, which helps keep it rattle free. But uh, this particular one we're looking at comes in about the most gorgeous color. So you can see all the metallic coming through here. Just looks absolutely incredible. Now going along with the frame, there's a few features to talk about before we get into how the suspension works. So on the front end, this runs their straight shot down tube. You can see coming straight from the head tube, down to where it kinks at the bottom bracket, it's straight into this junction. Now Trek is doing that to help keep the front end quite a bit stiffer and to avoid the crown of the fork running into the down tube of the frame, they've integrated their technology called knock block. What knock block does is it's a steering limiter that kind of locks out the steering here so that the top of the fork isn't going to contact the down tube. So if you're in a crash, it helps make it a bit easier to maintain, make sure your bar doesn't spin around and that sort of thing. But it still allows tons of steering motion to be able to get through the trails. Now, I personally have owned a 2020 Fuel EX7, and I know some people feel like this takes away from the experience, but I didn't have that issue. But one thing to mention about it, this knock block system can be removed so that you don't have to run knock block but you do just have to watch out to make sure the clearance between your fork crown and the down tube doesn't become an issue. Coming down to the center of the bike, you'll see it's got a press fit bottom bracket. And then out back, we're going to see the ABP suspension. So Trek's ABP suspension is kind of their hallmark suspension setup. They use it on most of their full suspension bikes. And what it incorporates is essentially a modified single pivot. So you've got one high pivot above the bottom bracket that drives back into a concentric bearing system where the chain stay and the seat stay of the bike are both located around a bearing system through the axle. And what that allows for is that the brake is gonna move on the same plane as the suspension, giving it an active braking pivot or the ABP name. Now that allows very little interference between the brakes. It's also gonna allow the bike to have good anti-squat characteristics so it should be able to climb pretty well. And that seat stay is gonna run up to their rocker link setup. Now the rocker link helps the leverage ratio going down onto that Fox float rear shock. And you'll see here, it's gonna have a minnow link adjustment. And essentially what that is, is that's an ovalized pivot that you're able to unscrew this, you can do it even out on the trail, and adjust the seat stay length between the high and the low position, uh, even while you're out riding or at home. Now what that's gonna do is that's essentially going to adjust the angles of this frame by about half a degree. 
So checking it out, this bike happens to be a medium large. And if we run through the geometry, the head tube angle is gonna come in at 66.5 and high and 66 degrees and low. Effective seat tube angles are 75.5 and high and 75 and low. The chainstay length runs in at 436 millimeters and the bottom bracket height adjusts by six millimeters where it's 346 millimeters in high and 340 in low. And those geo numbers are gonna allow this bike to be really playful and fun on most trail systems without being so slack that you really have to rail the bike for it to come alive. Now the front end of the bike has an inch and an eighth to inch and a half tapered head tube coming down to this RockShock 35 fork. This is the gold version of the fork, which means it's gonna run a motion control damper. So you have a lockout and adjustment all the way across. It's going to have rebound adjust down at the bottom leg here. And on the non-drive side, you'll see that it's going to be air adjustable. So you can add and remove air from this fork to get it set up for how your riding style and your weight is gonna need the bike to perform. And then it is compatible with air tokens which I have a link to how that works just above, but air tokens allow you to dial in the ramp curve. It's exactly what you want to feel. And combining that 140 millimeters of front travel with the 135 millimeters of ABP rear suspension and the modern geometry makes this a very capable rig for most trail riding, you know, light enduro kind of stuff, as well as your all mountain trails that you might have all across the US. Moving through the cockpit componentry of the bike, we're greeted by a Bontrager alloy handlebar. This is 750 millimeters of width. It's gonna run a 31.8 bar clamp to this Bontrager rhythm stem. And then it goes back to a Bontrager Arvada saddle mounted up on a Transx JD YSP 18 dropper post. This is a 31.6 dropper post, a 31.6 bar clamp there. And then the drop of the dropper post is going to vary based on the size of the frame. Extra small and smalls run a 100 millimeter drop. Medium and larger is 150. And by drop, essentially I mean here on the handlebar, there's gonna be a lever that you can press down that's gonna allow you with your body weight on the dropper post to drop it down. And then you press it again with your body weight off and you'll see it comes right back up. Powering this fuel EX7 Ford is a one by 12 drivetrain from SRAM. So the SRAM drivetrain we're looking at here is their NX series. So it's NX Eagle, which means one by 12. So one gear up front, and then you have the 12 speeds in back. And this Eagle NX derailleur is gonna be clutched, which means it's gonna have good retention of the chain as you're going over bumps. Although above the chain stay, you've got this nice rubberized setup with splits in between. So it's gonna help control some of that noise if you end up having it. And then in the back here is an 11 to 50 tooth 12 speed cassette. So that 11 to 50 tooth is going to give a super wide range driving forward to an Eagle 30 tooth narrow wide chain ring. By narrow wide, you can see the profiles go narrow and wide. And that essentially links up to the different plates inside of the chain. And this chain ring is direct mount onto the aluminum dub NX crank set. So it's very easy with three bolts to be able to remove and change the size based on the gearing that you'd like out of the bike. Slowing the bike down is Shimano's MT-401 brakes. These are a hydraulic disc brake. You've got right lever for the rear brake, left lever for the front brake, at least here in the US. And those are mineral oil master cylinders going down to two piston calipers, both on the front and the rear. Moving into wheels and tires, I believe the Fuel EX7 punches a bit above its weight because of the Line Comp 30 rims. These Line Comp 30 rims are a double walled alloy rim. They happen to run a 29 millimeter internal profile and they're tubeless ready using a strip system, which makes it really easy to get set up. And what makes these wheels neat of course they're boost front and rear but the, the rear wheel uses Bontrager's rapid drive 54 tooth hub. This 54 tooth hub essentially allows really fast engagement and with just a few dollars you can upgrade it from 54 teeth of engagement to 108 and what that engagement gets you is essentially really tight movement between the next spot that the pedals are going to engage. So 54 teeth is pretty typical of a higher end hub and 108 is among the highest. It also makes for that really cool ratcheting sound. And those wheels are housing some Bontrager XR4 Team Issue tires. 
The XR4 Team Issue tire is coming in at 29 by 2.6 inch width on this bike. And the tread profile on it is nice and open with ramped center knobs that alternate between three and two knobs. And then the sides have straight as well as angled treads to help lock up in corners. The actual weight of this Trek Fuel EX7 is gonna come in and weigh. Thirty one point two four pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the 2022 Trek Fuel EX7. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to browse the channel for more videos like this to check out as well.